Checking in on week two here on the Open Alliance show. We got a fantastic world champion team coming in, 44-81 at Team Rembrandt's coming in from the Netherlands. Uh, this is a team I, I've been infatuated with for a long time, not just because of the free waffles that they bring uh, to championships, but building fantastic robots and obviously world champions uh, as well, too. So welcome. Do you guys mind introducing yourselves? Let us know what you do on the team. Yeah, sure. My name is Stein. I'm a mentor on the team for a couple of years now, I think since 2019. And this year I've mainly been involved with our strategy department, really looking into game analytics, going deeper on the data and making better predictions on which robots we should build. My name is Julian. Uh, I'm involved with controls, doing uh, electrical stuff. And uh, I'm involved with media and branding, so posting stuff on Instagram and, yeah, and stuff like that. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Well, welcome, welcome to, to the fun. First Updates Now is supported by Kettering University. Discover why Kettering University is the number one choice for many first students and schedule your tour at kettering.edu. And by Stryker Careers. Help create the next medical breakthrough in a fantastic internship or career when you visit careers.stryker.com. Well, we're delighted to have you. I know both Greg and I are, are very excited to talk more about uh, your team and what's going on. So uh, week one is now past. We're looking into week two now and uh, what your team's been working on. So I know you got quite a few examples in front of you here. We have some uh, videos, some slide decks to show off. So what do you want to start us out with? Yeah, so um, let's start with, uh, I think, the part that really drives what you're prototyping, the strategy. Um, this year, we really decided we wanted to go more in depth, make sure that we not only design uh, cool robots and robots that would do stuff really well, but that they do the right stuff really well. So we really upped our game on the analysis front. Um, and so one of the things that we started with was we went really specific into defining what tasks can, it, can you do in the game and how does that correspond to skills that a robot needs to have. And after some more an analysis, looking at old games, um, discussing about what we wanted to do, what kind of level our robot needs to be. We came up with a concept that we think is going to be good enough to work really well and maybe win us an event in week one and two when we will be competing in Florida. So that comes down to what we call the winning concept. And it has stuff like driving, which is the most basic skill, but no good robot starts without a good drive frame. But then we also need to do taxiing and auto, herding cargo, holding cargo, Scoring cargo in the lower hub is going to be our first priority. And if that works out well, if we can make our targets in that, we're going to um, improve on that and also go for the high cargo. Um, aside of that, we do want to do some climbing, but we decided also to start there with focusing on the mid run, do that well, and then improve from there. I think that's really one of the things that we want to do is stay within our meat and make um, a, a small thing perfect before we go to bigger things that we might not do as well. Yeah, that's a great strategy. Um, so what are the, what are some things that, so you, you've broken this down. Um, obviously the R's are the things that are totally required in ranked order. The G's are your kind of like your stretch goals, right? And then they go on from there. Um, how did you, when you broke the game down, how did you draw that line between what's required and what your stretch goal was? What were the, what were the things you learned that drove that? decision mm, so one of the things that we we looked at especially for the cargo is how do points uh how do you get points but also how you get ranking points so we looked at the the ranking point that you can score get by scoring 20 cargo or scoring uh 18 cargo if you get the, the five uh, cargo balls in autonomous and they already told us that um if we have a very fast uh, drive frame with a, that can just score low cargo that will already maybe give us one cargo, uh, one ranking point per match, even if we would lose that match. So that was a driver in making that more important than high goal. Of course, a high goal is worth double the points. So you could say, as long as you're shooting more accurate than 50% for the high goal, it's always better to go for the high goal over the low goal. Um, but we thought mm, that kind of is true, but it's more about uh, the the speed as well. If you just drive up to the low goal shoot there, it's going to be a, a way lower cycle time. So that was the main thing that drove us to that decision. So Got just to uh, clarify what you said there too, is that you're looking at uh, obviously a low, a low hub shooter, right? But you're also planning on driving up to the hub to shoot in as well. Yeah, that's, that's going to be one of the real things. We don't want to have any complicated vision things that can be ruined by light or by not getting into the right position. 
shooting from far away is always more of a risk than shooting from short. And we have really good drivers in the team that will make sure that even through, through tough defense, we can get it right up to the hub and score real easy. All right. Well, that that's great. Um, so one of the one of the first tasks that you see on your required is uh is uh, kind of picking up balls. So do you want to do you want to talk about your your intakes and some of the prototypes that you've done there? Yeah, sure. Um, let's see intake prototype here. Yeah. So for um, the intake, we have um, two. 3D printed a lot of stuff you can see over here. We made a couple of spirals. Yes, um, from the inside, well, they are very thin. Um, and we, we kind of use them like uh, vectored intake wheels. So they are meant to um, pull the ball from one side to the middle of the intake so we can take it in through the middle of the robot. We have tested uh, with the 3D printed wheels as well. Uh, around this wheel, there's uh, nitrile, uh, locally sourced. So it's from Europe since uh, getting it from America is quite, well, it costs quite a lot. And well, we have a, a couple of different intake prototypes right now. Um, the first one you'll see is the one with uh, the vectored intake wheels. Um, well, they uh, quite simply, they are meant to um, draw the ball to the middle of the intake and take it in. And, um, well, we're still working on it, but we have some other prototypes as well. Um, the second one you can see uh, uses Velcro. Um, we have a roller and uh, three Velcro strips around it. Um, these Velcro strips are meant to kind of catch the ball whenever um, it's bouncing. Uh, and the ro a roller is really meant to shoot it over the bumper. It's also a thing you can maybe see in the two videos. Uh, the vector intake is with a hole in the bumper and the other one is over the bumper. Now we have tested some other prototypes like a kind of a car wash intake as the third video. Uh, it's with a um, big flap that spins uh, quite fast, so we can catch bouncing balls. That's very um, cool. You know, looking at this uh, this last one, this, this car washing take I noticed on the video itself, uh, bouncing balls, it seemed to kind of pull in pretty well, but then it would have a little bit of problem kind of lifting it up over your bumper. Is there anything that you've looked at from doing future iterations to help with that? I'm not really sure if we still uh, making different iterations on that uh, intake, but um, right now we're more, uh, today we worked a lot on the vector of the intake. So. Uh, and I think the, the with the flappy uh, Velcro on the nitrile wheels, that is basically an, a variation of the car wash intake, as we call it. Sure. Because that also has the flapping around catching the balls from the air, but it has the um, more effective really pulling it in. As you said, it does get stuck with uh, just a car wash. Well, take us through more of your uh, progress. What else uh, has your team been uh, working on? Yeah, so um, as I said earlier, we're really getting more into depth of analysis. So one of the questions we were asking ourselves, there's only 11 balls. How can we predict um, if ball if cargo will be uh, a, a choke point in, the, in your game? Is it, if you're going to score too fast, you might get to a point where statistically your car goes more in the hub than that it's on the field because it takes four to seven seconds. So what we did is we uh, created a simulator using Python, which simulates um, robots on the field driving around with different kind of uh, cycle times for both collect time and shooting time. And then we made this heat graph that tells us that statistically, unless you go for an insanely short collect time, there will be about seven to six cargo balls on the field at any time which is really handy to know because if you then distribute that over the field, that tells you you're always going to be about a quarter field away from two balls. Wow, that's really interesting. So as we keep uh, moving on with this, obviously some great uh, analysis that you've gone in through with this. Uh, you know, we, we talked about intake, we talked about the cargo balls. Uh, obviously we still have like a shooter and a climber, that sort of thing. What else do you want to talk about in your robot? Um... So in our robot, uh, yeah, the shooter, I think, is really interesting to get a bit sure. more into. Yeah. Um, the shooter prototype, you can see it uh, behind us on the left right here. Um, 
we have tested quite a, a lot of different uh, gear ratios and uh, different wheels. And right now we're testing compliant versus stealth wheels. And we are putting about five wheels uh, on uh, one axle to create like a, a well, more width on the shoot, uh, shooter. Um, in the videos we have posted online, you can see uh, the same uh, iteration of a, a shooter with different gear ratios. Is we've been using these planetary gearboxes from Rev, which have been very useful, um, switching out uh, different gear ratios very fast and very easily. The, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I think you already had the videos on screen. So um, this prototype we originally designed, as we as we discussed in our strategizing, to just be a low hot shooter. But just upping the speed already told us, well, this might be a prototype. Just go a little bit faster. You already have that high goal that we had as a stretch uh, goal. So that's really something you can uh, come up with a lot of things in theory, but you always need a prototyping to verify and even sometimes find out stuff is a little bit easier than you thought. As a team that, you know, obviously it's not in the States at all, so a lot of stuff shipping slower to you, that sort of thing, right? What are you doing to, like, uh, try to either uh, represent, like, uh, game elements, like the hubs and that sort of thing? Like, how do you how do you compensate for the delay in sometimes getting what you need? Oof, yeah, so some of the stuff is really tough, especially when it comes to robot materials that are uh, standard, like ref, ref uh, but the, the neos that we have, stuff like that, that just that is just going to take a while because that needs to import. Um, when it comes to fuel elements, we'll go local. We'll try to uh, build it just from wood so that it's uh, yeah copied, or we'll go to our sports store and we'll get those big tennis balls, stuff like that. It's going to have we have to get it quicker than we can get it from the state. So we have to be a bit uh, inventive, I guess. Um, aside of that. Yeah, as, as we told you about the wheels and what are probably going to be on the wheels of our drive team as well, we go custom. We don't get them from the States, but we build our own versions that have similar materials that are the, 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 the prefab ones that you get in the States, but now you just have to build them yourself and design them yourself. Things that we don't think about here in the States, right? <laughs> so. Well, I mean, it's, it, you know, Tyler, okay. it's like, you know, we, we've talked about this before. It's, it's like the, the old school version, you know, people yeah. have been around for a long time. That's what we, we all had to do. So it's, uh, I mean, it's great that you guys have great sponsors and great capabilities that you can actually build that stuff um, lo locally. I'm sure that really helps a lot. Um, so we've talked about uh, your intakes and we've talked about your shooter. Um, do you have anything you want to talk about in terms of uh, climbing? Mm, for climbing, let's see. Do we have something for climbing to show? No, we don't have something for climbing to show. Okay. To be honest, for the climber, we looked at it and we thought, um, as you, as you saw in our goals, it was going to be for climbing. We were going to go for mid goal. That was our main goal, and maybe, and that's even farther than a stretch goal. This is more of a uh, really, if we get super lucky in our build season and goes absolutely perfectly, we'll see if we can go for the high goal as well. But for the mid goal, I think we have a lot of experience with climbing. It's not that different from older games. So we have some uh, really easy um, references to go to. So that's not something we're prototyping a lot of time into, especially with COVID now. It's pretty tough to have a lot of people at our build location. We always have to be in small groups. So we decided that's, that is something we're just going to um, rely on old experience for. So no prototyping there. It's nothing to see, unfortunately. Okay. No, that's, that's, that's great. Um, so I, I'm curious. So, you know, that, that heat map that you showed earlier was really a really an amazing thing. And, you know, the analysis is something that I think is very unique that your team is doing that, like really deep analysis. What do you predict is going to be the average scores in the week in week one of the of the tournaments? Yeah, so average scores. Um, so what we did in the preseason is we looked well, at old games. We looked at what are the trends there. And so one of the trends that we found is that um, if you want to be in the top 10 percent in week one, you have to score 60 to 50 to 60 percent of what uh, is almost uh, the maximum possible score for an individual row. Um, and so what we did is we calculated basically if say you're doing uh, cycles unstopped all the time, then you come out. Uh, ooh, and now I have to guess a bit. I think we were at about 70 points that a single robot could score in a game. 
um, and then you take 60% of that, so you come into the low 40s. Now, an average robot is going to be a bit lower than that, of course, because not all average robots can be in the top 10% of robots. But what we predict is that it's going to be about 60% um, of that again. So it's probably going to be about 25 points where you score uh, the cargo ball that you have in your uh, preloaded, and then a couple of cycles and a low or mid ball climb. As we start to wrap up, uh, one thing I want to ask you about is in regards to traveling and your events. Obviously, no events that happen in the Netherlands or really anywhere close close to you, right? So, uh, you know, frequently I've seen your team uh, travel out to Florida. You're doing the same thing uh, this season. Uh, I got to ask you two things. I mean, nothing in Florida, but why Florida in particular? And then more importantly, you're doing a week one and week two event, which I think is extremely ambitious for a team that has to travel you know, so far, which means you have to ship everything way ahead of time, right? So you're chopping off even more time off of your, your build season, so to speak. So why why look at like a week one, week two event versus maybe like a, a three or four or anything like that? Does it just work together because they're back-to-back sort of thing? Well, um, definitely we looked at which regionals were close to each other and well, quite quickly after each other because we can't stay like four weeks in America. That would be very expensive. Yes, right. So we try to find two, uh, two regionals, sometimes it's one, but we try to find two regionals which are close together and uh, the week after each other. And well, this time it's week one and two. And with regards to shipping, uh, we do it a little different this year. We try to bring um, uh, different subsystems uh, of our robot with us in, in the plane. So we don't have to ship it uh, way prior of uh, leaving to America. So that it also adds a requirement to our robot. Every single subsystem <laughs> has to be small enough that you can pack it in your suitcase. <laughs> so it's yeah, probably going to be one of our smallest robots until the end. Uh, I will say that that probably really, so this is one of those things where not having a bag probably really helps you, right? Mm. As compared to like even just a few years ago, because you could just, break stuff down and logical things. You don't have to worry about like, oh, I've got to wrap all this in a bag and then convince the security at the airport not to open the bag or fill out the form or something <laughs> like that. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. And and we're laughing about it now, but it is really tough to get your robots into a different <laughs> I'm country. sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, 4481 Team Rembrandt, thanks again for uh, checking in with us and showing off uh, your team's progress. We're obviously very excited to see what some defending world champions can uh, bring back. Uh, and uh, show off for this season. So we'll be checking in with you in just a few weeks, but appreciate the time and good luck uh, through the build season. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having us. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks to Striker Careers for their support in this video. First, alumni and mentors are making Striker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Striker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Over one third of Kettering's current students are former robotics team members. Go pro at Kettering University and get a free t shirt. Students in grades 8 through 12 and located in the continental U.S. scan the QR code and complete the form by January 31st, 2022 and receive more information about Kettering. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.